Hi, you guys. So as promised, I wanted to do an updated asthma um, video for you guys, the gene, following the GINA guidelines. I have it broken down with how I teach with the assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, and treatment to kind of give it to you in that fashion to help you be able to identify it and help you to easily retain it and be able to apply in practice as well as on boards, right? So um, GINA, just to start from the very top, GINA is the acronym for the Global Initiative um for asthma so that's what the acronym is for this is the global initial initiative for asthma but when we're looking into it you know when i tell y'all assessment i like y'all to think of the signs and symptoms right how do they present what are they complaining about right so when we think about asthma we know that asthma is a, resp a respiratory condition that's chronic it can worsen the symptoms can worsen they can improve you know they can be controlled or uncontrolled it's one of those things um that we just have to maintain, so to speak. But when we think about asthma, those patients present, they can present complaining of shortness of breath. They can complain of nighttime awakenings with shortness of breath. This can happen during the day when they exercise. Um, they can complain of wheezing, chest tightness, coughing, you know. So I want you to think of, of the common things that you know that are those signs and symptoms that um, patients present with, okay? Now, diagnosis. Let's kind of talk through these. So number one, just like we were talking about the signs and symptoms, you want to first identify that assessment, right? So how is that patient coming to you? What are they saying is going on? What are they complaining about? Are you noticing any wheezing? Can you hear audible wheezing? Do they talk about constant coughing? How often is this occurring? Are they saying they're waking up two and three times a week? feeling short of breath, you know, these are things that are going through to build it. You want to gain their history to see if they have like allergies or if they're noticing that um, the symptoms happen during the spring season and there's a lot of pollen outside and that may trigger it or they were in a dusty area and it triggered these symptoms because that may be the source that um, triggers their asthma, you know, so it's still making you think on these um, terms. You'll do the spirometry, of course, so that we can actually get a definitive number as to where um, where they are on a more medical metrics um, perspective for uh, the asthma diagnosis. And then you'll be able to confirm that diagnosis based off of all the things that you have built on those uh, steps that we just mentioned. Now, evaluation. Evaluation is big with um, asthma because that's how we, we treat, right? Because we have to see their pattern. We're evaluating how often this is occurring. Um, what triggers are the things for their exacerbation? Um, if we need to adjust any medications, are they adhering to the treatments that are provided to them? Meaning, hey, did you take that inhaler or... Um, hey, are you using the inhaler appropriately? You, you got to make sure of all of those things so that you know when and how to adjust their medications. Because, hey, if you're, if you're not using the inhaler, okay, that's the problem, you know, so I don't need to bump you up or anything. So just knowing uh, those factors as well. And so a few things on that too. Also paying attention to like comorbidities. Because I know when we think about triggers, we think of allergens and things of that nature. But you also want to consider comorbidities like GERD, sleep apnea, you know, um, chronic rhinitis, things of that nature. These can contribute and trigger asthma attacks, right? It can be a source of the asthma or asthma flares if they're having that. But a few things that you want to do and assess and evaluate is... Um, over a four week span, how many symptoms like daytime wise are they having these symptoms? Are they more than twice a week or not? You know, that's one of the things they commonly tell you to look at uh, any white, any nighttime awakenings, just like what I was just talking about, you know, so, and trying to gauge how often this is happening. So is it happening two to three times a week? Are you waking up once a week or whatever? Are you having any nighttime awakenings? Are you having to utilize your um, reliever more than often? Are you utilizing it more than twice a week? You know, these are kind of things you want to um, evaluate. Are you having to limit physical activity? Like, do you notice that the more active you are, the, the worse your symptoms are? So just gauging all of those things to get a good evaluation to determine whether they are 
um, slight, partially controlled, uncontrolled, or well controlled, so to speak. Now, sorry, treatment. Let's get into this treatment because I know that's what y'all really want to know and that's what y'all really want to um, pay attention to. Okay, so the big thing with Gina, they want you to remember that you want to review like their symptoms, their exacerbation, any side effects, their lung function. You want to assess and confirm their diagnosis and make sure that they are able to um, adhere to the prescriptions, understanding that they know how to utilize the inhaler, uh, their techniques to utilizing them, as well as making sure you're staying on top of the comorbidities and things of that nature, and then adjust the treatment as needed. Like that's the cycle they want you to continue to follow when you're thinking about the GINA guidelines. But what what changed? Because we knew asthma already as a stepwise approach. And I know you guys, I was right there with you. It's just so many different medicines and steps and things to consider that it's not that it's, we don't understand it. It's just a lot of variables to it. And then they kind of changed it. They changed it for efficacy purposes, because at one point we were telling people with asthma, OK, well, if you have an exacerbation, here you go this. You use this inhaler for a rescue. All right. I want you taking this and this inhaler every day to prevent you from having the exacerbations. People were not following this is was one of the problems, which just being honest, that's very difficult. Um, even for me, you know, I don't have asthma, but I'm just saying like, if you're giving me multiple things to have to utilize and do on a regular basis, it's hard to consistently do those things. And especially when you have to consider everybody's different um, lifestyles and um, accessibility, et cetera. So, you know, sometimes, and these things aren't the cheapest either. So sometimes there's patients who, okay, I, I just went with the rescue in case I had a problem, but I couldn't get all three of the inhalers. So with this initiative and study, they went down a different route. So now the that's why it's broken down as the preferred reliever and the preferred controller. Those other options are still options that work, but we have the more preferred option. So when you hear me say preferred controller and preferred reliever, that's what they have now named that to help you um, kind of group this together to know that this is the preferred option. Testing purposes, they're trying to get you to see if you know the preferred options, right? So in step one and step two, you your preferred controller is that ICS and Formeterol PRN, the low dose ICS and for Meterol, PRN, okay? Low dose, ICS, and for Meterol, PRN. So it is a combo inhaler. It has both of these medications in the inhaler. And I know you're probably like, duh, Brittany, but um, when I'm going through this in one-on-one sessions, people were thinking I was saying to take two different inhalers. No, they have combined these medicines into one inhaler to make this more easy and patients are more... Um, they're more adherent to this regimen because it's now not three things that you're 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 utilizing inhalers wise, you know, it's all in one. So these two, ICS, an inhale cortical steroid, and a formeterol, and formeterol, which is a LABA, low dose PRN, preferred controller. Okay. So this is what you would do to control and prevent exacerbations. Also, it was found that the ICS decreases the amount of exacerbations that you have. Now, step three, step three is considered um, the preferred controller. You still are utilizing a low dose ICS and formeterol, but is now every day. So not as needed, but daily, right? And this is where they call the thing MART, M-A-R-T, maintenance and reliever therapy. So the same medication is covering you for your ma- on a maintenance purpose and a reliever purpose, okay? And then step four. The preferred controller is a medium dose ICS and formeterol daily. So what's happening here? As we go up the stepwise approach, instead of adding medications after medications after medications, we're simply increasing the dose of the combo inhaler, right? So remember, step one and two, we started with the low dose of the combo inhaler as needed. Step three, we still are on the low dose, but we took you from as needed to every day. Step four, 
since we're already taking things daily, now we're bumping up the dosage. We're going to bump you up to a medium dose every day. Step five, the preferred controller, we're going to take that medium dose every day and you can add in a llama or you can opt to go the route to just bump up the dose to a high dose, ICS and formiterol every day. Okay. Now, so that's the control, but the preferred reliever, this group is your low dose ICS and formiterol PRN. So instead of a Saba for the preferred route, the preferred reliever is your low dose ICS and formiterol PRN. Okay. Now, what categorizes us in this, right? Step one and two, um, those patients, their symptoms are uh, less than four to five days a week. Step three, symptoms most days, um, they're having symptoms on most of, the, most of their days and they're waking with asthma once a week or more is typically um, what is occurring in step three or what you should consider for step three. And then step four, they're typically having like the daily symptoms. So you know how it progresses. We started with it less than four to five days. Then they bumped up to most days with the nighttime awakenings. Then they were having it every day. And then, you know, like step five, they start to have it all throughout the day. But with this, <clears throat> it's also very patient specific. So say you have somebody on um, step three, like a low dose ICS and formiterol every day and they're complaining of having multiple symptoms weekly, you're going to bump up because you can see that they're not controlled. After you determine that they are having adequate adherence and following the aspects that they're supposed to, then that you want to go to the stage to um, step up to the next dose, right? Because it's not controlled. And then let's talk about the um, alternate. So the alternate treatment, the only time we go with alternate treatment now is if for some reason they're unable to take like the ICS or whatever for some reason, or um, or they can't do the combo inhaler, or it's too expensive for them, or they already were on this regimen and they would prefer not to go that route, then you would stick with this. So step one, the controller is to take ICS whenever the Saba is taken. So we know that the Saba, your albuterol, your rescue inhaler is the one that is your preferred reliever in this, the alternate, I should say alternate reliever is how they have it listed for this. So the alternate reliever for this route is what you originally knew. Step one, you would control it with ICS every time you use your Saba. Step two, you would just do a low dose ICS every day. Step three, you would do the low dose ICS, but you would also do a LABA inhaler daily. Step four, you would do either a medium dose or high dose ICS plus a LABA daily. And then step five, you would do a medium or high dose um, ICS and a LABA daily, but then we would add in a LAMA. So take a look at those things um, and just I just wanted to present it to you so you can understand one versus the other. So again, we had the preferred route where we're controlling with a combo inhaler and we're just bumping up the dosage. We pump you up from PRN to daily and then we bump up the dose, low, medium, high, right? But the alternate, if they're having that Saba as the reliever and then you would just go through these steps with your ICS, then your ICS and LABA, then your medium dose. So the same thing, but separated, so to speak. So it's a little bit different. Just make sure that you are, and if you need to just write it down, because you know, I always say repetition is the key to retention. And this is just one of those things that you got to keep in front of you to know it. But I hope y'all found this helpful. If you have questions or need me to really hone in on anything more specific, specific, let me know. Um, I'm happy to do so, but I wanted to kind of give it to you in this way. And if you need any other resources I do offer, feel free to reach out to me. You can shoot an email to the nursing studio, um, the number one at gmail.com. You can visit the website, www.thenursingstudio.org, or give me a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number. But all right, guys, and go do your practice questions. Um, I have some asthma questions up for the day, but I just wanted to make sure to break this down a little bit for you guys. All right. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.